5G enterprise opportunities. According to an Ericsson 5G report, this is a 700 billion market by 2030. How can communication service providers claim their part of this potential market? And what are the challenges they're facing? And what are successful monetization strategies? I'm proud to have Jan Carlsen, the Senior Vice President and Head of Ericsson Digital Services in our show today to talk us through all these questions and even more. Jan, welcome back and it's great to have you in the show again. Thank you, Ronald. I'm delighted to speak to you today. It's already three years ago that I was in your lab in Sweden, in Chista, where your team showed me the 5G core capabilities, but also the edge computing and how to support leading CSPs with your business support system. And it was clear by then that software is crucial to enhance and monetize the CSPs network. Can you share your thoughts on this? Yeah, you bet. So first of all, our, our competitive portfolio is a result of you know, big, important decisions we've taken a while ago, investments into cloud native, investments into automation. And so we're extremely proud of our software and we're, of course, extremely proud of the related services that our customer are, are asking for. So what our teams are talking about is the code that never sleeps. And this, these days, this is the code that is the driving force of change in industry and society. So it's really, yes, all about software. So Jan, you speak to many leading CSPs, to their executives. Can you share what challenges they, they share with you? Absolutely. So number one, uh, it's a big opportunity. Uh, the $700 billion opportunity that is potentially addressable is capturing the attention of many, many CSPs. It's, I would say, not the only, but one of the key drivers for the investment in 5G. So top of mind. Um, and in an industry which over the past years hasn't shown too much growth, Here's a massive growth opportunity, potential opportunity. You can imagine how important it is. Um, but it's a new type of business. And we all know the difficulty of going from something that you know very well, you know the competitors, you know the demand, to something which is new. And fundamentally, there are, there's a choice. I'm simplifying really much here, Ronald but there's an opportunity to go left or right. And what I mean with this is you can go into different verticals, you can pick a vertical or two and try to go deeper into that vertical. What kind of vertical? Well, automotive, manufacturing. So really climb in the value chain or you can pick a more horizontal approach where, which is, similar to many CSPs existing business, connectivity related, except that this time it's, it's connectivity more to the edge, adding security. So in both cases, it's about understanding what the needs of the customers are. It's a bit more challenging in the, in the vertical approach, the new ecosystems, partnerships that I, I need to uh, Establish in order to be uh, credible in, in that the approach. Connectivity, again, is, is easier, should be easier for, for many CSPs. But in both cases, there's a need to invest in capabilities to address the opportunity. Uh, and I, I really want to emphasize this. The opportunity comes together with investments in, in capabilities, not just 5G radio, not just packet core. It, it goes way, way beyond that. And um, so fundamentally, a tough choice. And the tough choice also, if I just expand on this, depends on the CSP starting point. Do I have an enterprise business today? If I do, I probably am. I, I have a fixed operation because most of the enterprise business today is delivered over a fixed network. Uh, which market am I addressing? Is it only a local perspective, a, a country perspective, or do you have 
international, more global ambitions? Uh, am I a leader in the market or more a smart follower? Um, who are my competitors today and tomorrow? Um, and very important question, when am I planning to launch 5G? Um, because 5G is the fundamental enabler platform, if you want, to capture this enterprise opportunity. Not the only one, but one of the key ingredients. Yeah, and you mentioned this is top of mind of the executives from the CSPs. But on the other hand, I read some recent reports from Omdia and from, from Bearing Point. And they state that CSPs are being left out in the 5G enterprise deals. Do you see this as well? And what do you think is the reason? Uh, I think it's, it's a super good, <laughs> super good question. So yes, uh, there's a recent Omdia report that uh, highlights that one in five early 5G enterprise opportunities, only in one out of five of those opportunities is a CSP leading that discussion. So it's, it's kind of highlighting, emphasizing that CSPs really need to step up, be more visible, show that they can, they want, and they can engage in these type of discussions. And I think the, the um, other insight in this report from Mondia is that CSPs need to change their posture from a kind of 5G first, putting the technology at the forefront, to business first. What is the need? What is the outcome that the enterprise is really looking for? Uh, another insight from the Omdia report, if I just continue that, is that 80%, 80-20 rule, 80% of the early enterprise opportunities are coupled to a few verticals. If I just mention which they are, manufacturing, transport, transport slash automotive, utilities, energy, and mining. So four verticals that capture 80% of the opportunity. That's where the money is, at least in the initial phases. And uh, the key then is for CSPs to evaluate, assess how to best leverage the opportunity in those verticals, in those businesses. So the other aspect, of course, from working for Ericsson, is that we are accelerating our focus on the enterprise business and supporting our CSPs in addressing that opportunity. And this spans across the company, not just one unit. This is a, a company-wide uh, uh, priority. And we are very much focused on supporting our customers. Our go-to-market is through CSPs. So we support them in assessing what is what is the choice that they could take. And we're also helping them in building out the capabilities that they need to address the opportunity that they want to go after. Some examples of how we're supporting CSPs. One is private networks, also called campus networks. We call it dedicated networks, so on-premise networks for these different verticals. We're also very active and enjoying very good growth in IoT, IoT-related solutions. We also have an offering in helping the operators manage SD-WAN uh, security type of uh, workloads or capabilities. And we also have enterprise communication and collaboration solutions. I want to emphasize as well, take the opportunity here, that 5G is the enabler because it has a capability including speed, including latency, including reliability that allows CSPs to address these enterprise opportunities, not only with that fixed or fiber approach, but with 5G as a primary access. So it's really opening up a new set of a new set of opportunities. I was talking about SD-WAN before. Now that we're working, so many of us from home, how does that open up? You combine SD-WAN together with 5G. How does that open up new opportunities? Um, 
finally on, on 5G, uh, slicing, many of us has probably heard about slicing. So just recently we launched RAND slicing and RAND slicing is one of the key components of our end-to-end slicing uh, offering, which includes radio, core, as well as uh, OSS and, and, and orchestration. Yeah, you give so many examples on one hand, the four markets, on the other hand, whether they choose technology from IoT, from, from campus solution, or um, yeah. from SD1. What, what should CSP executives do now to get this piece of this 5G enterprise market? What strategic steps should they take today? So I think uh, I've spoken quite a lot about, I've spoken about customer needs. I've spoken a little bit about technology. Uh, but I haven't emphasized enough, I think, Ronald, uh, partnerships. Uh, in, in our opinion, it's absolutely fundamental. And you could say, oh, but many of these companies are competitors. <gasps> Can I work with them? Yeah, absolutely. It's not optional. It's, it's a must. Um, if I just take one step back, you know, when you look at all these other companies, oh, they do this and that, and we are only CSPs. Yeah, but look at the asset that the telecom industry is providing to the world. The telco industry is offering reliable, secure, global interconnectivity. It has the visibility end to end, so you can provide the assurance, not, not only consumers, but also enterprises require. And if I just look back at last year, and you know, the world we're living in right now, where would we be without this connectivity? What an asset that the telecom industry is providing. And if I build on that, we as a telecom industry then have an opportunity now to scale up how we can scale up with 5g so 5g is this again this platform that allows us to address new opportunities we can also scale up in partnerships and establishing partnerships with with other companies including a key category which is the hyperscale cloud providers and in ericsson we are working very very hard in uh, moving here from theory, what could happen, what could you do to, uh, to practice. And there's a couple of uh, customers that I want to highlight, which are public, uh, Telefonica Germany and Telstra, where we are enabling, helping to enable, we're not doing this alone. In the Telefonica Germany case, we're working hand in hand with AWS, Amazon Web Services. And it's about capitalizing, leveraging, of the CSP strengths and the hyperscale strengths in a, in a win-win where actually the ultimate winner is the enterprise. Thanks to these one plus one equals more than two offerings, synergies, the enterprise can be provided with use cases which are really compelling uh, for them. Um, so maybe a final point I want to emphasize as well. A key recommendation we're making to CSPs is to really go for a, not just deep with one hyperscale cloud provider, but have a multi hyperscale cloud provider strategy. And the key reason for this is to give the choice to the enterprise. Some of them might be perfectly comfortable with a particular hyperscale cloud provider, but typically you will find that they want the choice. And uh, our assets, again, back to Ericsson, are providing that choice through our 5G core, through assets like orchestration. We are giving that, that we're putting that capability in place for the CSPs. Yeah, I really like your, your remark about partnerships. We, we see that the whole industry is, is an ecosystem and you have to be part of this ecosystem. And that's the route to go to create value together and to, to help your end clients. Jan, thank you for sharing your recent 5G enterprise developments. And for the audience, thank you for watching and we see you next time.